morning, good morning. Welcome to another victorious Park and Praise and Facebook Live worship service. And you'll be able to view it later on our YouTube channel. Come on, let's give God some praise and give God some glory. All in our living rooms, all over Park and Praise, God is worthy to be praised. Come on, if you love Jesus, put your hands together, give him some praise and give him some glory. Lay on those horns. I love Jesus, and not just because he first loved me, but I just love Jesus because God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, and that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm excited about worship today because as much as I love to preach, I love to listen to preaching. And today we have a guest pastor and guest preacher to come to break the bread of life to us. I will introduce her to you a little later in the service, but we're getting ready to get our praise on with the choir slash praise team and our minister of music. Come on, give God a victorious praise. Uh, I said a victorious praise because you're more than a conqueror and you have complete victory in Christ Jesus.
Gracious and wonderful God, we are grateful this morning for the things that you have done. You let us rise this morning, God. Although we may not be able to see the sunrise in the cloudy day, you made it a cool day, God. And we're thankful for everything that you do, everything that you have done, everything you're about to do, everything that you're planning to do. And there are just so many things, God, that you're doing and that you've done that we are even aware of. But we give you praise and glory as we take this journey step by step to walk into the purpose of life that you have designed for us. We come this morning, God, to say thank you in the name of Jesus for being the architect of our lives. Sometimes, God, we haven't even seen the blueprint of our lives and how you're going to guide us, but we've learned like Abraham to move by faith without having all the details, but seeing that the end is going to 
be a great victorious win for you and your kingdom. We come this morning, God, to express to you in praise and worship the gratitude that we have for you because a long time ago you changed our attitude and switched us to the column of the saved and the sanctified and the filled with the Holy Ghost from the column of the sin and full of hell and headed for hell and for that God we just want to say thank you we want to say thank you God that you brought us from worshiping online only to worshiping in park and praise and Facebook live we want to say thank you God for being God like you've always been God even in the midst of a pandemic we want to say thank you God for every blessing that you brought our way we want to say thank you God for sustaining us for keeping us for protecting us for allowing us to lean on you we want to say thank you God because you've been a crutch when we've been limp we want to say thank you God because you've been a strong tower when we needed somebody to lean on we want to say thank you God because you put water in the cup, food on the plate, food in the fridge. We want to say thank you God because you kept the utilities running through the house. You put clothes on the naked body. For that God we want to say thank you. You put money in the bank. You allowed investments into the stock market and to mutual funds and 401ks and 403bs. We want to say thank you God because we are drawing from an interest that can't be found in the New York Stock Exchange for we paid our tithe and our offering and you poured out an interest when you opened up the windows of heaven poured out a blessing that we had room enough not to receive is there anybody giving God praise for a cup that runneth over thank you God move somebody under the mantle of our cup unto the saucer of our cup to experience our overflow and abundance. Be with us, God, as you always are. And when it's all said and done, we'll give you all of the glory and praise. For we know, like John knew, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen and amen.
if you have your Bibles, 1 Peter, the first chapter, the 18th to 21st verse, verses. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believed in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God.
everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Um, I think it was two Sundays ago um, that we had an altar prayer moment and we prayed about the increase of violence um, to people of Asian and Pacific Island descent. And um, I shared with you that the amount of racist and violence act toward people of Asian descent in the state of New York had increased by 800 percent. And we saw what happened recently in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, they're still investigating and discussing whether it had any racial bias in it. But today we're going to pray to God about the, the evil that is persistent in our land where we have a percentage of people in our land, whether he be guilty of it or not, who simply discount, dislike the humanity of other people simply because of their ethnic origin or the place of birth or what they look like or how they speak, the way they look, the whatever it is is about them. But we were all created in the image of our God. Adam, who's Adam, is the image, mankind, both male and female, of the very image of God. And whether you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or not, the image of God is a part of your structure. And you truly take on the likeness of God when you receive his, the sonship of his son, Jesus Christ. So we're going to lift up our political officials, those who legislate and make laws, so that we can really begin to deal with in this country the thing that troubles us the most which is systematic bias and racism gracious and wonderful god we come to you as we do our part to live out the command and the creeds and the principles of the holy writ the word of god the bible the basic basic instruction before leaving earth we pray for the pervasiveness of racism that is inherent across the world, but in particular in our land. We pray, God, that we will begin to walk as brothers and sisters of humanity, even when we are not of the same religious faith, because the tenets of our faith teaches us that God has no respect of person. It reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So, Father God, we're praying that we would ourselves check ourselves and evaluate ourselves and rid ourselves of anything that is not like you about other people who don't look like us. And then we pray, God, that we would be able to receive them as you have received us because you receive us with all our mess, all of our junk, all of our baggage, all of our past stuff, all of our present stuff, and all of our stuff that is to come. Help us, God, to see humanity and see one another in the image and view for which you see us us and guide us and help us to keep those principles father god in the name of jesus we pray for the rollout of the vaccination we pray god in the name of jesus for the eradication of covid 19 we pray god in the name of jesus christ that you will continue to work with the biden administration and the u.s government as we talk about giving vaccine shots not only in america but also across the world we thank you god that the president had a vision for 100 days uh, for 100 million doses and he met it in 60 days and I don't care what anybody says you had your finger and your handprint yeah, all over yeah, it yeah. and we give you praise and glory for it now help us Jesus in your son and help us God in your son Jesus name to do what we need to do to fight for justice in the name of Jesus because it takes righteousness and justice to be a citizen of the kingdom of Almighty God and we pray in the name of Jesus amen and amen now you can do justice I haven't we haven't reached our numbers yet you have not registered for the Nehemiah action which is tomorrow amen we need about 45 other persons to sign up in order for us to meet our numbers at um of 70 for the nehemiah action tomorrow and one of the things we're doing with hillsborough organization for progress and equality we are now doing the research the legwork for systematic bias and racism in Hillsborough County so we can begin to take effect on it. You know what we've done with the work with the civil citations, now we moved on. For juveniles, we moved on to adult civil citation. You know there was $10 million for affordable housing last year, $10 million for affordable housing this year. 
you know that an apartment complex for affordable housing opened up this year in January. It is filled to capacity with a waiting list. You know that there are others to come. You know that we're doing the work that needs to be done among the elderly. You, you know that the sheriff department now has social um, workers to help the, um, the officers deal with people who have mental illness so people don't get killed because they're having a mental um, breakdown. You know, all of that work is our uh, justice ministry foundation through Hillsborough Organization for uh, Progress and Equality, and we want you to join in and be a part of it so we can have hope in Hillsborough County. Come on, give God praise. Give God glory. We got a, we got a preacher this morning. We got a preacher this morning, um, Reverend um, Etta Owens, who is the pastor of Mount Olive AME Church in Plant City. Um, she took her foundation and uh, worked her way through as a committed layperson, as a member of New Bethel AME Church in Lakeland, Florida, um, the, under the leadership of presiding elder at the time, Pastor Jimmy J. Um, Thompson. She has prepared herself in heart, mind, and soul. She went back to school, got a bachelor's degree, went back to school, got a master's degree, and is right now at Asbury Theological Seminary working on her doctorate of ministry. And um, she is a woman of God. If you have been around her for any length of time, you know she's a person who loves people and loves the people of God and that she loves God. She is a world traveler. Well, not today, but some other time you should talk to her about all the continents and countries she has traveled to. She is the mother um, of one daughter and she has a son-in-law. I think she got a grand dog and she waiting on some grandchildren. <laughs> Amen. Her daughter is a medical doctor or MD. I love her. She's a friend of Pastor Price and she has not only a giving spirit, but she backs that giving spirit up with tangible gifts every single year of her ministry from what we call that little bitty church over there in Plant City. She sends a $100 gift to every church on the Tampa district to show that if you give to God, God will give to you and supply all your needs. After the singing of the next song, the next voice you will hear will be our sister in Christ, um, the Reverend Etta Owens, soon to be the Reverend Dr. Etta Owens. Come on, give God some praise for the preacher woman.
give God some glory. I said that's a place that we ought to go ahead and give God some glory. To be able to even open our mouth and say that I am redeemed. That's a testimony within itself. If anybody has just who I am, I know I can tell them that I am. I am redeemed. But we praise God for this opportunity this morning. Uh, I almost don't know how to act. It's such a great honor and privilege to be invited to this wonderful congregation of victory. Many of my friends are here in attendance, and I thank Reverend Michael Price for the invitation and the officers and members of the church for agreeing with that invitation for me to come and just share a few words with you this morning. And I don't know about you all, but I'm a worshiper, so if I happen to lose my, my mind in the middle of the sermon, just keep on listening because the Holy Ghost is moving on these grounds. What a beautiful setting here to enjoy God's, God's nature, his, his setting up for us this morning to let us know that his spirit is here with us and it abides with us. And we have a powerful testimony this morning that we are, we are redeemed. I know that's the, the theme that you all have been preaching from through this Lenten season. And if you like me, we're walking that pathway to Calvary during this time. And we're having a lot of reflection, both inside and outside of things that are going on in our lives. And it's a time where we need to be reassured of who we are. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity just to gather at your foot. God, we come just to be fed by you. So it's not the preacher that's going to preach this morning. It is your Holy Spirit that's going to take up residence within me and preach a word that you've already predestined and established for this day. Now, God, use this vessel. And if this vessel gets in the way, God, move me out of the way because you have all power and all might to let your word go forth in the way that you designed for it to go. I pray that it would touch hearts this morning as well as my heart. I pray that you will examine us. And if there be anything in us that's not like you, God, remove it so that there will be no barriers for us to receive what you have for your people today. Bless this house called Victory, God. I pray that as they move into this season and move toward Easter, God, that you will pour out a mighty blessing and overflow, God, that they won't have room even to receive on these grounds, God. Make it manifest. You said miracles, signs, and wonders follow your word in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare it even before this word goes forth that you've already set them up to be blessed today, God. You've already set them up for overflow today, God. You're already going to have them drinking from the sauce of where the overflow abides. And I just give you glory right now. I thank you for using me, God, in a time such as this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I just want to share uh, a few words with you this morning. And you all know me. I'm, I'm a teacher preacher. Uh, if I hoop and holler, it's because the Holy Ghost showed them took over. And I don't know what I'm, but I'm a teacher preacher. And this morning, I just want to share some thoughts around your theme. You've been talking about being redeemed. The song was a great introduction to us for that this morning. But I want you to think back until 2019, a time that I call before COVID. There was a powerful movie that was released that dealt with redemption and mercy. Now, these two words, redemption and mercy, are legal terms that deal with the law, the failure to keep its requirements and the tools necessary to free someone from punishment that results from breaking the law or from being pronounced guilty under the law. Now, you may have already picked up on the movie that I want to talk about this morning, but the movie is entitled Just Mercy. Many of you are familiar with this thought-provoking true story. However, help me summarize it for those of you who have not had the opportunity to see it yet. Just Mercy is the story of a young lawyer Brian Stevenson, who graduated from Harvard University, the School of Law, and he decided to relocate to Alabama to defend people who had been wrongfully condemned of a crime or people who had not been afforded the proper representation at their trial. Now, one of his first cases, according to the movie, was that of Walter McMillan, a black man who was unanimously sentenced to die in the year 1987. He was sentenced for the alleged murder of an 18-year-old white girl in his hometown. Now, in this case, 
there was evidence that could have proven to be in his favor, but it was the legal and the political maneuvering along with the overt racism of that time and location that proved to be the winning odds in a system that was stacked against him. Stevenson appealed to the court. He wanted them to grant McMillan a retrial, but all of his efforts to obtain mercy for McMillan were either ignored or overturned. But before I give away the ending of the story, I just want to review those words recorded by the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 21, where he wrote, Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver and gold from your futile way of living that was inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood, as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God, raised from the dead, God gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are in God. Now, eventually in the movie, Stevenson was able to have the case heard in the Supreme Court before a judge where he appealed to the judge with a motion to dismiss the charges and to have the case overturned. His goal was to reunite McMillan with his family and to restore his status in the community. We can say that McMillan's price for redemption was Stevenson's countless hours of research, his work, his appeals, along with his outright cry for mercy to extend McMillan on his behalf. Now, in the end, it proved to be worth the price that was paid. McMillan was granted his freedom, and Stevenson went on to free and redeem many more people with his death penalty appeals. Now, this movie is a movie I've watched several times because there are some quotes in this movie that I think are right on topic for our text and our theme today. One of the first quotes that stood out for me in the movie was from Macmillan, who said, we are guilty from the moment we are born. Think about that. If we think about how powerful and how true that statement was for him and still for us today, we must admit that there is a lot of truth to be found in these words. From the time of the fall in the garden by Adam and Eve, we've been guilty from the moment we were born. We've been guilty of sin, sin that has enslaved us to the point where we're no longer free to live as God has destined and purpose for us to live. We were designed to reflect the image of God. Our pastor said it in the prayer. We are purposed to live in full communion with him. Ours was a beautiful arrangement to be fruitful and increase in number Feel the earth and have complete authority and control over it. However, from that moment in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve disobeyed God, we've allowed our greed, our selfishness, our pride to take over and control us. And now we're enslaved to sin and we're indeed guilty from the moment we were born. Romans 3, 23 reminds us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All sin makes us sinners. And all sin cuts us off from a right relationship with a loving and living God. Sin, therefore, causes us to be pronounced guilty with a sentence that leads to death because we're disqualified from experiencing life with God. And just like Walter McMillan, we have been ultimately sentenced to die. Now, in Brian Stevenson's fight for justice, he suggested to the courts that each of us has done more well, that each of us is more than the worst thing that we have ever done in our lives and that it's never too late for justice. Let me say that again. Each of us is worth more than the worst thing that we have ever done and it's never too late for justice. Our world is filled with immorality, deception, abusive power, manipulation, and the push and the prayer has been to moralize the world, to try to elevate its morality, to elevate its ethics, to elevate its integrity. However, when we read the headline topics, when we scan the internet, when we listen to the local and world worldwide news, or when we turn in to listen to our government officials and politicians, it seems that we as Christians have condemned this world. We've given up on any chance of this world being converted to Christ. You say, well, preacher, why do you say that? I mean, as Christians, don't we have hope for the world? Well, let me just say it this way. We've stopped preaching the gospel with the hope of transforming the world. 
we pronounce the world is guilty and we've moved on with our church rituals and our traditions. Yes, we still invite people to church, but in the back of our minds, we already assume that they'll never come. Or if they do come, we make them feel so unworthy, they never return. So through our thoughts and through our actions, we've sentenced this world to death, forgetting that we're deserving of the same thing too. As Christians, we have to review our stance and repurpose our mission. Our goal should not be to condemn the nation to death because of their sin. We do not have a moral agenda, one of condemning those who just don't get it right or those who just won't get it right. The pure and true message of the church is recorded in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, where it reads, There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit gives life, and it set us free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, sin doesn't define us. Because each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done in our lives and it's never too late for justice. Christ is still standing at the doors of our hearts. He's waiting for us to let him in. And those in the church as well as those in the world have that opportunity. It is Christ who will forgive if we would only acknowledge that we are all in need of his forgiveness. Now in the movie, the Young lawyer Brian Stevenson went on to say, we all need grace. We all need mercy. It seems that humanity today no longer likes to think that we've been freed or saved because of God's intervention. We think that it's our freedom because of things that we have done, that we are the reasons that we're free because of the work that we put in and the, the protests that we have attended. But we all know that's not true, even in the story. Walter McMillan was reluctant at first for Stevenson to even take his case. He felt as though every effort had been made in his behalf and it had been exhausted and that this young lawyer couldn't even make a difference no matter how much education he had or no matter how hard he worked. McMillan also felt that because he was a black man convicted of a crime against a white woman in a place where racism, discrimination, and prejudice reigned, that he would not be granted grace or mercy. He felt as if somehow he didn't deserve it. However, that didn't have any effect on the mindset of his lawyer and representative, Brian Stevenson. He knew that regardless of how others view these death row inmates, if grace and mercy were to be extended, justice would have room to prevail. He didn't abandon his clients, but he paid the price of redemption by suffering through all the abuse of the courts in an effort to gain life and freedom for those whom he defended. Just like him, our sin calls for justice. Our justice demands a price. The price for that justice is death. Romans 6, 23 tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Consequently, the redemption of the sinner must come through death. The Old Testament method of paying the price for sin was through a sacrificial system of ransom lambs that would substitute the price of death for sin. God would have the people in the Old Testament days to bring that lamb without spot, without blemish, and to offer it as a sacrifice for their sins, but we know this was only temporal. It was only temporal. It wasn't meant to be the system that God had in place. Recall in our text, in verse 19, where it says, we're not redeemed with perishable things like silver and gold, but with precious blood, as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, even Jesus Christ. Now, all of that imagery finds its way to the cross where we find our grace and our mercy. We're redeemed by the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The ransom price required by God was death. And the lamb died to pay that ransom price. It was the lamb's death for our life. Jesus Christ is that lamb. He died so that death could pass us by. And we received his grace, his free and unmerited favor, receiving what we didn't earn but graciously bestowed on us because of his generosity, his benevolence, and his love. And then we received his mercy, his compassion, his forgiveness, his leniency, not receiving what should have been our sentence, but we receive what God would have for us. He replaced the death sentence with his forbearance, 
with his kindness, with his love, and with his son's life. In response to all that Stevenson had done for Macmillan, Walter Macmillan said, only one person cared enough to fight for me. Think about that. Throughout the whole movie, in this town, only one person cared enough to fight for me. Walter McMillan had been redeemed. He was freed from the judgment of the courts. He was freed from the terminal sentence of death. He was freed from the execution of his death sentence at the hands of those who truly hated him. He was finally and forever set free. He was released, liberated, emancipated, rescued, saved, restored, and yes, he was ultimately redeemed. Think about our world today, morally, intellectually, socially, religiously, and every other way you look at us, we're sinful. We are separated from God and destined for eternal destruction. But thanks be to God, like Walter McMillan said, only one cared enough to fight for me. That one is Jesus Christ. He is the lamb that was slain slain to pay our price for redemption. So now, when we think about it, we are therefore redeemed from sin. We're redeemed from divine judgment. We're redeemed from death. We're redeemed from execution at the hands of the enemy. Scripture says that we are redeemed with precious blood, the precious blood through the death of a precious lamb, an unblemished, spotless lamb. The end of verse 19 lets us know that this lamb is none other than Jesus Christ. That's why John could see Jesus coming in the distance and he could say, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It was Jesus's precious life that was given for us. He died on Calvary's cross to pay the ransom price, the price of redemption to satisfy the justice of God. Peter said that God planned this from the beginning of the world. It was predestined, preordained, prearranged on our behalf. And verse 21 emphasized that Christ was raised from the dead. That's the divine affirmation that the sacrifice was complete and perfect. It was paid in full. We are redeemed. Now, the predestined, incarnate, risen, ascended Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, died to pay the full price. He died to purchase our pardon, our redemption. And we're redeemed from sin and death because of the sacrificial lamb who bore the price for our guilt and our sin. So therefore, I ask the question, why are we redeemed? Verse 21 says, it was for our sakes that we might be believers in God. It was for us to bring us to God so that our faith and our hope are in him now and forevermore. He is the one in whom we hope. He is the one in whom we trust. All of our hope and our trust lie in God. This is our redemption. So from now on, when we talk about sin, we have to talk about substitution. We have to talk about redemption. And when we talk about substitution and redemption, we must talk about the ransom, the redeeming price that was paid by Christ, the perfect lamb, who died for our sins. And when we talk about redemption and talk about the redeeming price, we have to recognize our need for submission. We must come to God, submitting ourselves before him, recognizing our sinfulness and our need for his forgiveness. And then we need to embrace Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. And in return, Christ will give us the gift of salvation that leads to eternal life. That's the gospel, the means by which we can gain salvation through the blood of redemption by his son, Jesus Christ, because the songwriter wrote it this way. He said, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, to heal and forgive. He lived and he died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. That's the story of our redemption in him. That's just mercy to God. Be the glory 
Amen. Come on, let's give our preacher a big round of applause. She is a preacher, teacher, par excellent. Amen. And uh, she is well versed in the word of God. And I know that you have been blessed here in Park and Praise and all over Facebook. You are redeemed is our theme in this Lent season, this season as we walk and take the journey toward Resurrection Sunday to remember all that Christ has done for us. I'm going to just ask the choir to sing a little bit of that song um, that she ended with. And I'm going to ask if you're parking praise and you're on Facebook Live and you haven't experienced redemption that as they minister to us in song, that you would come today with the mind made up and make that life-altering decision, that life-changing decision that you're going to receive Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the Paschal Lamb of God, who takes away your sins and brings you to the place where you can shout that you are redeemed. As the choir ministers in song, and you take time to make that decision, I'm also going to ask that the ushers would come forth and lift our offering as we are ministered by the Holy Spirit through the ministry of music.
come on, give the ministry a minute to big round of applause. Amen. Let us uh, pray. Gracious and wonderful God, thank you for the gifts that have been brought into the house. You are the source, and we thank you for the resources to do ministry. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And we ask that in our month of giving through obedience, that you have the hearts of the people and given them an amount to give above their tithe and the offering. And we know, God, when we are faithful in the tithe and the offering, that there is meat in your house, and there's got to be meat in our house. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We want you to know that coming up on Easter Sunday, we're going to have a drive-in movie night on April the 2nd, which is Good Friday. <laughs> And in our drive-in movie night, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the movie is the passion of the Christ. We'll have the big screen set up right here, and you can stay in your car. I think they're going to provide some things as such as um, popcorn and those kind of things, or you can bring it on your own. But also on Good Friday, we're going to have a fish fry that's being sponsored by Sister Michelle McKinney. Oh, I can't say her name. McKinney and the Kinslers. Um, you can pre-order. Um, you can pay in cash or you can pay using the cash app and we're seeing about um, also using Giveify. If you want to pre-order, please contact um, the Kinslers or Sister Michelle McKinney. They will begin at 3 p.m. until everything is sold. You can have a fish sandwich only for $8 and a fish dinner for $12, which includes fish, fries, hush puppies, and coleslaw. Payment methods are exact change, please. Um, and they will also accept cash out. So if you want to place an order to go, please, ma'am, and please sir, do so. Um, do not forget, again, tomorrow is um, Nehemiah Action for Hope. It is very important that you are on the phone call. We'll have all kind of decision makers on the um, phone call, the county commissioner, state attorney, Andrew Warren, maybe a representative from the sheriff department, Chief Dugan of the Tampa Police Department, the clerk of court, city councilman. You just go on and on and on and on to help us make decisions. Um, we are now, I saw that the people were protesting in Progress Village, something about a tower or something. 5G tower, 5G tower that's coming to um, Progress Village, you need to be a part of hope. We now have the CARES Act. I'm one of the founding people on that with um, my friend. Um, we're doing things about the environment, and that would be a good place for you to be to help us with that because we also have attorneys who don't charge anything to help out with those kind of things, and we know we're already dealing with the effects of the gypsum mine. So you need to be on on, on, on in place on tomorrow evening at 630 so we can do the work of justice in our community um we just finished with our mid-year and um we're praying that you will pray for the worship services for the rest of the week and we're getting ready to have this pastor to come and give us our benediction and our final blessing and y'all give her a big hand did i miss something oh amen they got they got milk today they got um sweet potatoes they got squash they got egg plants they got zucchini. Um, I took a big box of zucchini home yesterday, and you're welcome to get anything um, that is back there. We were down a little bit in our distribution of boxes, so we really have extra today, and there's no need to let it go to waste. And while we're doing that, let's give our um, food pantry ministry personnel a big hand um, who that ministry is flourishing. Let's give Sister Tawanda Bradley a big hand um, with her community development corporation grow um is also adding to what we're able to do in the community if you're here and you don't have your shot they're giving shots at the manual p johnson if you're here and you don't have your shots they're giving shots there and tonight to 5 p.m and the same thing at um keeney united methodist church is also going on those spots are less than three miles from each other please go there and get your vaccination i've already had mine and it is the pfizer they're not doing Moderna in Hillsborough County, Pfizer only. Um, and all I had was a sore arm. I can't tell you what the second one's going to be like. But the pastor's getting vaccinated. 
Well, that depends on who you are, because the elder said he had he was sick, and Evelyn was running around the house like nothing had happened, and they got their doses at the same time. Amen. But it's re I'd rather be sick for two or three days Amen. than wind up on a ventilator. So I'm going to get vaccinated so I can Amen. miss the ventilator, hopefully. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give our preacher a hand. Amen. Give God a hand. She'll give us final words and tell you when to sing doxology and then give us benediction. Again, thank you all so much for the invitation today and allowing me to have the opportunity to worship. That's um, that's the one thing I miss since I've been uh, appointed as a, a pastor. I miss being able to visit other churches and support other ministries and to hear good preaching and teaching and be in the fellowship. So know that the Sundays that I'm not with you doesn't mean I'm not praying with you and I'm not worshiping with you. I'm always have you at my heart and have you in the midst of my prayers because God is doing a great thing here at Victory and I always want to be a part of what he's doing with his people. So thank you again for the opportunity. All praise and honor and glory goes to our God. Amen. Let us start sharing our, our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> precious sacrifice of that perfect lamb you are redeemed you are redeemed now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love that his son poured out on Calvary the indwelling of the Holy Spirit let it all rest rule and abide with us henceforth and forevermore and we all agree and we all sing together Thank <laughs> you. 